Hi there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. So today is the first day in making the awesome new 124th scale Spitfire from FX Spitfire Mark 9. I'm making it as a Spitfire FR9. So far, we've got this. And this has taken quite a lot of time to build. So this is what we're starting with today, the cockpit area. And we're going to get this sort of essential tub sorted by the end of the day. If you enjoy the show, and I hope you do, please remember, give me a thumbs up in the little like button down there. And if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and you'll be notified of all the new videos as they turn up, including the rest of the series of building this Spitfire. Now, there's a lot to do. I won't keep you waiting. So let's crack on with building this Mark 9 Spitfire in 124th scale from FX. Well, we're going to start this epic kit with the seat. Um, the seat slots together like so. Then the sides. You can see there's like a uh, sort of round shape there. The side sort of sits into that. Like so. And there's this piece that goes in into the base of the seat support, like so. And then into the lower of these two holes. Right, I'm just going to stop it here. There's a very, very, very important thing to point out, something I've made a mistake on. Now, if you look at the top where the seat is fitted to the frame, you'll see that the pointy bits of the frame aren't lined up with the back of the seat. The seat back needs to be lined up with the pointy bits. So it needs to be sort of reclined back from where it is in here. If you don't do that, then you won't be able to fit the seat belts properly. It will look weird later on. So please, unlike me, make sure you line up the seat back right up along the pointy bits on the side frames that you can see there. Okay, let's get back to it then. At the top of the support. Like so. Then there's another cross piece that goes in. This is this, this little hole here. And there's another hole at the top there. That's where this locates. And then on the other side as well. So you can see the, the rear support for the seat members there. Okay, so once again, the seat isn't reclined enough. So if you do it properly, the seat reclines along this sort of blue line, okay? So which means that the armor plate will actually slot behind the seat nicely across those really thin supports where the red line is so it will slot into there really really easily and it will connect to the back of the seat really well and it will be at the right angle so again do make sure you set the seat properly to begin with and then avoid all these mistakes and what i've done with this seat i've painted it sort of a medium brown color overall then what i've done i've put in these sort of darker sort of low lights on the right hand side of each piece uh, of leather here and then a, a lighter sort of highlighty sort of thing on the right hand side of each one now what, we, what i do then is i just sort of blend those in a bit so they're not too obvious but it gives a bit more of a feeling of modeling a bit more of a feeling of of three-dimensionality 
because these things, this is going to be in uh, inside the cockpit, it's not going to be well lit. So some of this contrast, it's lovely that it's been modelled, but I don't think it's going to be showing up. So, so that's like a, a lighter, like a highlight on this right hand side here. And then with a darker chocolate colour, sort of a low light on this side of shadow, because wherever you have highlights, you have to have shadows. And then just blend those in. And so that's part of the seat to go on for the moment. It's this. I suppose it's a height adjustment or something like that, I guess. I don't know for sure. So what I've done, um, so I've painted the seat, done a bit of shading, um, put in some weathering lines as well, uh, some wash. Just highlighted these buttons because I think they would be highlighted. Put the straps in, pre-painted them in linen, a little bit of um, steel for the eyelets and then again another wash. Uh, just generally sort of added sort of a black wash all around just to pick out some of these details. Uh, and that's all we've done so far. Right, so next we're going to put this... Uh, do you know, I have no idea what it is. Someone would tell me. I should really look it up. So, you know, have like a, a map of the Spitfire. So I can tell you what all these bits and pieces are. Um, looks like it's some sort of cable thing, so maybe it's a tensioner for the seat belts or something. I don't know. Anyway, that sits on there. And this comes as two parts. The ten the, the, this reel here is one part, and then the box here is another part. And what I'll do is I'll just give that a dry brush in a moment just to bring out the detail of it around the edges. Then on the other side is this part here and this is where the armor there's another piece of armor plate i suspect goes on um there's a a tab on it and a tab on that it connects the one up with the other now i've made um a 170 second c 47 and this bit comes as photo etch. Look at the size of it here. It's <laughs> really you know, well moulded, but here, take it down a few sizes and it's a, a really, actually quite fiddly piece of photo etch. There we go, right, so that's good. The last thing I need to do from now on this is to put, is to put the seat onto the frame. So a few little spots of glue here, 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 and here. And you can see the seat will sit in there and those these top bits here will go into those slots there. Like that. Make sure those make sure they sit down properly. So make sure that um, this bit here is pushed down enough so that this seats correctly on both sides there and there as well. Yeah. And that's the seat on its supporting frame. I mean, it looks grand. I'll just go over it with a bit more weathering solution is particularly around um, this side here on the the frame but it's beginning to look really nice excellent right onto the floor of the cockpit cabin area now there's a few bits and pieces that need to go on as usual I have no idea what this is but it's a support for something important don't know what. Uh, there's a cross beam here that sits in place there, and another cross beam here. Now these two beams, I'm going to just run a bit of um, 
extra thin cement around around them to secure them in place. This um, side panel goes in here. Another one on the other side. I don't know why I haven't painted them. Um, I just probably missed them when I was spraying everything. Instantly, um, back of this is aluminium, front of it's interior green. Just a little splash there, a bit I've missed, but I can tidy that up earlier. Tidy that up in a bit. Yeah, that's looking good. Right now, this is the. What side is this? This is the starboard side. I'm going to put in a few um, bits and pieces as this sort of gas bottle y kind of thing. Now, I've painted the bottle already. What I did was I painted the um, interior green stripes first, then painted the black bottle. This now has to be aluminium. And then, when that's done, this goes on top and the uh, bottom of it's been painted black obviously then the top gets painted red sort of, sort of like that sort of thing really but I'll show you that in a minute right this PC I, I, I was going to show you how I put this in but you know what it was such a faff um, I didn't I thought I'd put it in then show you so this piece here this tank these pipes this selector switch and this valve all come as one part okay now due to the you know uh, the restrictions of things like molding and all the rest of it it doesn't just sort of sit where it should so what it is i put in this part first the tank goes in first then there's a, a slot in the stringer here for this um selector valve or whatever it is, selector switch or whatever it is to go in. So once that had set, I then set that. Once that had set, I then had the chance to sort of faff around and get this sitting as from much as I could onto this stringer here. Um, there's no no sort of, sort of I can't find any sort of formal locating pins or anything like that there for that. So that that's as as good as I can get. That's the one that took some time because that went on it perfectly. That one pretty well, but because of like the sort of springiness in the, this plastic here, this part took a little while to to hold down, pin down. So that's the order I did it in. Maybe that's a better way of doing it. I don't know, but just to let you know, that's a bit of a tricky thing. Now this is the where the instrument panel sits. And on the back of it, you can see all the instrument panel, instrument bodies rather, on the back here, which is rather nice. I'm just going to put the compass mounting on now because it's a lot going to be a lot easier to paint it whilst it's actually attached than it is otherwise. Okay, so that gets painted up. Um, this in part, of the, the sort of supporting green, the compass itself in black. There's a decal that goes in there and a, and a cover as well. We'll have a look at those in a little minute. Um, and I'll also paint up the um, the sides of the frame here. This has all been sprayed black. The, the piece that goes in here has been sprayed black, I should say. And I'll have a look at that in a moment. Right, now I'm going to be using decals for all the instruments. Um, do you know, I could paint them, but I don't think I'd make as good a job uh, there's going to be things like here on the um, artificial horizon. This this V here, it's outlined in white there on the kit. If if you use the moulded one, that's sort of one solid piece so that would just come out white. If I just um, brush them, I'm never going to get this detail. No RPM for goodness sake. So I'm never going to be able to paint that. So all of these are going in as decals. Um, what I would suggest you keep this really close by 
and actually do go through them one by one and cross them off when they're done. Double check where everything is. Um, for example, you've got one, two, where's, where's three? Well, three goes on, on the, this bit over here. Um, which I, I don't know whether it's an undercarriage selector or something, I don't know. Um, so make sure you don't miss out anything and yeah, just work right, right, left to right, generally speaking, and see how you go. Decal setting solution, of course, to let them set in, and then let them set in, let them dry really well, then coats of um, uh, matte varnish, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put drop in some either some gloss varnish or some uh, PVA into these to give them the look of instrument glasses okay so I'll crack on with that so the first thing I've done here is given this a dry brush um, very very light dry brush just of some white basically I mean you could use aluminium I guess but white's going to show up better in this situation um, what that's doing is picking up these bezels a bit um, some of them are going to be coloured later anyway, so it's good that they've got a, a, a white coat underneath to um, pick up other colours later. But it also just picks up these these sort of screw marks, you know, the mounting screws and whatever, bits and pieces, edges of the frame here. So it's just a, a very simple, um, straightforward dry brush in white first, but quite light. But just go over it time and time again until you're happy with the result. It also kind of slightly dulls down the black as well, which I, you know, I'm not entirely sure it's going to be that black. It shows up a, a lot greyer here than it actually is. Um, but yeah, happy with that. And let's get on and start putting on some decals now. Just a, a quick bit of an aside really, while um, I'm waiting for other things to dry, whilst all the decals on the uh, instrument panel for example. Uh, this is where the instrument panel is going to sit. Um, there's the some sort of switch here and something else and some wiring that has to be pasted in and of course there's the compass here now the instructions say to use light ghost grey here which is quite a pale colour on here but I've gone for darker grey in fact I might even go a little shade darker because I happen to have one of these and let me zoom out so you can see that a bit better This is a Spitfire Compass. It was recovered from a crashed aircraft, uh, an aircraft that came down in northern France um, on a beach, got covered up and was eventually dug up again. And a very wonderful chap called Paul, who I used to work with, I worked in a company for about 24 years. And when I left there, they gave me, also, they gave me an iPad and a really lovely sort of scrapbook and things like this. Um, but Paul, quite separately, um, being of a historian's mind himself, he's, he's passionate about the, the Titanic. He loves artefacts and remembering history through real artefacts. Gave me this. He found it on the internet, found um, uh, the whole history of it being dug up and stuff like that. And this is a... Spitfire compass. It's a compass from I think a Mark II uh, that was shot down. Uh, it belongs to a Polish squadron, which is kind of um, interesting because also I live really not very far from RAF Norfolk, where this very aircraft would have been stationed during the war and from which it would have made its last journey. I believe the pilot survived. It wasn't like a vertical crash. The, the, a large part of the airframe was actually recoverable. So I think it's a forced landing and um, they just, you know, the plane was never picked up or it landed in shallow water so it was never retrieved, whatever. Um, this, this is the compass he gave me. Now it's in a terrible condition, it actually doesn't work. You can probably just about see the needle in here moving around. I don't know if you can or not, but um, <clears throat> you know, you, you you can get these things restored, but I don't want to, because it is as it is, pretty much when it came out of the sand. 
um, a bit less sandy, obviously, but otherwise, as it has been for very nearly 70 or so years. So, just wanted to show you this, show that it's actually quite a dark grey here. Um, this is, you know, it's almost extra dark sea grey, which is actually what I've used on my Spitfire. It might be that later models, because this came from a Mark II, and what I'm doing is a Mark IX, it may, may have been that in the intervening three or four years that they changed the colour of this. I don't really think they did, so I'm keeping it, this colour, on my kit. And I just thought it might be a nice thing to show you um, as a sort of a genuine relic of um, some very, very brave men indeed and related to the player I'm actually building. So there you go, a Type P8 aircraft compass from a Spitfire. With the um, decals setting, they're going to take a long, long time to set properly. I've put um, some microsol on them, and then we'll put some microset, and then we'll let them dry solidly, then we'll varnish them and all the rest of it. Um, I'll get on with the rest of the interior. Um, these are the air bottles for the pneumatic backup system. I'll just put these on, get them together, sand out the, uh, the joints between them, and get those painted up. Right, the uh, cover for the compass goes in here. I'll just put in a bit of um, clear PVA. You know, the sort of, um, what do they call it? Canopy glue. Canopy glue. Just put some of that in because that dries clear. So hopefully you should still be able to see the compass and it will hold the glass in properly. So there we go, that's the instrument panel done. So what I've done, put in all of the decals where they belong. Um, a load of uh, setting solutions, so sit down into the bezels properly. Then once that's all dried, I've put a uh, matte varnish all over. Let that dry. And then I've just put in gloss varnish into the actual instrument bezels to give them the, like a sort of a sort of appearance of glass and it also pulls up the uh, contrast a, a little bit as well and finally I've just um, gone around these bezels with some colours that you know they should be there and uh, just to pull them out again because the, the ones on the decals don't really set very well so there we go that's the instrument panel done there's the compass done everything's ready then the instrument panel slots into the bottom of the cockpit like this and then we can fit the side wall of the cockpit like so make sure it's all in place so all the way along and then it matches up the sides as well and there's a decal that's supposed to go on here with like arrows and directions and whatever. But as you can see, if I to turn it that way around, there's quite a lot of relief to this central pivot point. And the decal is supposed to cover that. So um, I don't think it's a good idea. I've, so I've just cut a hole in the middle of the decal there. And I'm hoping that it will sit okay on the piece, otherwise I'll just take this middle bit off. Also, can't help thinking something's gone wrong with this sizing of this decal. Um, you see here, for example, the wording is halfway between the pivot and the edge where this lever is, yeah? Now, if we... We have a look at the um, relevant instruction here, you'll see that the wording's right at the very edge here, not halfway through. I think this is very missized because the the decal does have that center spot. It has the two outer spots here, both of which are on the part, 
but these two outer spots again are way, way too close to the middle. If we have a look, you can see those two outer spots are there and there when they should be actually where the models are. If anything, I'd say this is about half the size it should be, which is a bit of a problem. And these pipes go in, they sort of slot through the gap there, into the floor there, and then into the sidewall like that. Right, I've put the um, rudder pedals on the rudder bar, and the rudder bars go through the holes in the back here, and then just sit on this pivot here. Okay. Then there's this capping piece which goes through the middle onto the beam at the back here and sits on top of the pivot here. Uh, things really start coming together now, you know, all the bits and pieces that we've been faffing around with for ages start um, coming together. And next is the seat structure. And the next rib, not ribs, frame. Frames, these are frames, aren't they? Round bits of frames. And then the last frame here. Okay. There we go. Let's get on with the other side of the aircraft now. Just before we do that though, there's another couple of structural beams ready. Before we do that though, there's a couple of structural beams that go in. These um, these actually are spacers and they're quite useful for keeping these bits under control and in the right place. So yeah, uh, let's go that way around. No, they don't. They go the other way around. <laughs> oh. oh dear, it has been a long day. Right, so they go in. There you go, like that. Like that. So, there you go, that goes in there, that goes in there, that goes in there, that goes in there. Okay, see that now allows us to put the straps in, doesn't it? I'm going to cut in again here for a moment just to point out where I went wrong and where you should be going right. So you notice in the bottom left ring here, the uh, sort of leading edge of the seat where, where your legs would dangle over, it needs to be up raised so it matches the height of the two side pieces. Okay, that should just be one straight level there and it's a bit too low. That's because it's... Oh, also too far forward as you see in the right hand circle there the seat back is way too upright it needs to be reclined quite a long way so i was lucky that you know i had actually not been long doing this so i was able to kind of disconnect a few things and shift things around and get them in the right space if you don't do this it, 
if you get it wrong like this, you won't be able to put the straps in and your pilot will look like he's like, hit something head on quite hard because he'll be leaning forward so much. So you want the seats to be much more reclined and that means you need that bottom lip to be one. So the bottom lip that you can see here raised up to match the two sides and the back of the chair to lean back a bit more so that the pointy bits are much more along the line of the seat back. Okay. Okay, so uh, what we've done, we've put the, the ribs in, the supports in. Now I've put the harness in. Now this uh, then made me realise I hadn't actually put the seat on properly. So I took the seat out, reset the seat so these bits line up. Then the strap here can go through the hole and attach to the beam at the back here. Um, the thing to watch out for, down, down here you can see there's a, a centre strap that has to go through that little hole. You can see it. There's a hole in the back of the seat there. That centre strap has to go through that. Then the straps will sort of sit more or less flat against the seat. Um, I'll just put a bit of glue down there. I'll have to cover that up later. Um, then that appears to be that side of the aircraft done. No, I've said that before, but I think it is this time. That's the control column. Slots in through the rudder sort of assembly here. And there's a couple of little cup-like things. I don't know if you can see them. Probably quite difficult to see. There's a couple of cup, cup like indentations in the floor and it sits in there. Quite easy to move forwards and backwards. The control column itself comes as three parts. There's the main control column. There's these wires at the front and then at the back there's this sort of little, tiny little silvery trigger switch or whatever that says there. Uh, so there we go. That's in place now. Everything's beginning to look quite good, I have to say. So I've put um, all the side pieces on here. This this big chunk here goes on first, as does this, I suppose, map case. Paint them up, then put on this large piece here. Um, there's a wheel that goes on as well, and a decal here. There's this, this is a single piece here, slots on. And then this is a single piece here, just paint it up according to the instructions. And over these bits I've done a little bit of dry brushing of white just to bring them up. Then the um, air bottles here, uh, they just come as two halves, tidy them up and then stick them on. You know, there's a little tab that goes onto the top of this side of the fuselage here. There's a couple of supports at the back. And that's that. I think they actually look really quite good. So that's all done. That can now go on the other side of the cockpit. This, of course, is where we normally lose sight of a lot of lovely detail work that we've spent ages doing and that we now will never see again. But hey-ho. Let's just line up all the bits and pieces in their turn. That's the... Uh, bulk of our cockpit done. Um, now there's a few other things I need to start thinking about how I'm going to do that um, are a bit of an issue I need to look into. But leaving this to dry overnight is not one of the things I have to worry in my mind deciding shall I or shan't I, how am I going to go about it. I'll just leave this alone now to dry up. So. I'll see all this again in the morning. I did tell you there's a lot of work, there's a lot of detail, there's a lot to get on with. So if you're building one of these, get going. It's so, so worth the effort. It's a beautiful kit, but it does take time. Please, if you're building it, just take your time. Double check everything with dry fitting where you can and just gently does it and you'll get an amazing kit at the end of it. Now, if you've enjoyed today's show, first thing, do come back for more. The way you do that, 
subscribe if you haven't done so already hit the bell and you will get notified of every new video that comes up on my channel if you enjoy anything you see here please remember thumbs up on the button below to let me know and i hope i'll see you next time thank you very much good watching goodbye